Uh, the final speaker of this session is Ma Dr. Masayuki Inoue. Uh, the, the title of his talk is Radical Based Approach for Synthesis of Complex Natural Products. Uh, thank you for the introduction, and uh, I would like to begin my talk by thanking uh, Professor Yamamoto and Dr. Suzuki uh, for letting me to take part in, in this uh, extremely exciting symposium. Uh, today, I would like to talk about uh, our recent results on natural product synthesis. Uh, among the natural products, uh, we have been particularly interested in a highly oxygenated terpenoid with potent biological activities. I'm showing you uh, some of our target molecules, and all of these molecules have on different structures and different activities, but they share particular structural features. Uh, carb cycles are multiply fused, and those carb cycles are decorated by on multiple oxygen functional groups. Uh, because uh, highly oxygenated natural products often have a potent and selective biological activities, uh, efficient synthetic access to these compounds uh, may open up an opportunity for us to study and modulate the unknown biological functions. And of course, from synthetic chemist's point of view, these complex structures serve as an excellent platform for development of efficient uh, new uh, synthetic methodology and strategies. Today, uh, my talk will focus on the one single reaction, rigid radical reaction, and its application to a convergent strategy. Uh, if you look at this uh, molecule carefully, you will often find the very hindered bond within the carbon cycle, which directly connects to a tetrasubstituted carbon here or here. Construction of this uh, hindered bond is uh, one of the most challenging part for the total synthesis of these compounds. So to address this issue, uh, we uh, designed this particular intermediate alpha alkoxybridged radical. And this radical uh, is advantageous over this acyclic radical because of the two reasons. First, uh, because this is a tied up molecule, the stereochemical information of the starting material, intermediate products are same, constant, unchanged. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you cannot predict the stereochemical outcome of this reaction. And second, uh, because this is a tied up molecule, uh, steric interaction of these two molecules should be minimized. So this should have a higher reactivity than this. So this should be more suitable for making the hindered bond within the curve cycle. In fact, uh, we used uh, this bridge radical reaction to make this extremely hindered bond of the Y-anodol structure. Uh, starting from this compound, equipped with an uh, thiocarbonate, and under these conditions, uh, this CO bond is cleaved, bridge radical forms, and this radical is here to form this compound. And 14 steps from this compound gave rise to an y anodol structure. So because uh, this is a uh, very useful method to make the hindered bond, so uh, we uh, decided to expand the scope of this reaction, and also we wanted to develop more convergent version of this reaction, because this is, after all, free carbon extension. So the first model uh, compound that we used is um, this oxyadamantane uh, structure uh, with an thiocarbonate moiety. And under these conditions, uh, bridge radical forms, and then this as here to form the adduct through an three comma extension. And if you think about it, this is a nucleophilic radical. So this actually prefers the electrophilic olefin. So you can just uh, add this 
uh, electric peak golfing, and you can realize the three component coupling reaction. So what happens is that the nucleophilic radical adds to an electrophilic olefin in the presence of nucleophilic olefin. Then this uh, newly generated uh, electrophilic radical prefers this nucleophilic olefin in the presence of electrophilic olefin leading to this compound, chemoselectively and still selectively, because we introduced two new cell centers here and here. And this concept can be expanded to a uh, different substrate. Now we have um, three oxygen here and uh, alkoxyanide here. And that is similar reaction conditions, the three components coupled together, giving rise to this compound. So what happens uh, is shown down below. Uh, First, homolytic cleavage of this bond. This radical adds from the opposite face of the TBS oxy group. Then this radical, this olefin, uh, reacts here from the opposite face of this trioxide adamantine structure, leading to this compound with introduction of two new cell centers. And if you change the substrate from an alkoxyanide to an alkoxyanide, you can do a uh, radical polar crossover reaction. So in this reaction, we no longer use a uh, thin reagent or high temperature. Instead, we use a triethylborane, oxygen, and uh, aldehyde. So that this radical forms from um, this weak uh, c tail bond uh, at add here to form radical, and then triethylborane capture this radical to form the boron enolate. So this is no longer a uh, radical intermediate. And this uh, boron enolate participates in an aldol reaction through a most sterically favored six-member transition state leading to this compound. So in, under these conditions, the three new steel centers are introduced, one, two, three, in a single step. So uh, these uh, three model studies uh, demonstrated the high reactivity of the bridge head radical. So we then uh, applied the concept to the synthetic studies of this molecule toxin, And this molecule uh, is a highly oxygenated terpenoid, which have an five, seven, six member rings. And with the three component uh, coupling in mind, the disconnection becomes really easy. You can just form an, the three component out of one. Uh, this corresponds to a five member A ring. Uh, this corresponds to a six member C ring. And this corresponds to a part of seven membered B ring. Of course, the disconnection in your mind is much easier than a connection uh, of this three fragment to, an, uh, to this molecule in the real world. So I will show you uh, the construction of uh, this resin toxin skeleton in the following two slides. And we use a two radical reaction for assembly of this. Uh, structure. So although the uh, radical donor has a very complex structure with um, five consecutive steel centers, uh, radical indeed selectively forms from here, and this as a blue olefin, and this uh, radical as a red olefin, leading to um, this uh, three component adduct. So this uh, single reaction realized the uh, nine carbon extension and uh, introduction of two new stereo centers and here and here. And then uh, we con after we connected the six and five member ring, we still need a seven member ring here between the, these rings. So uh, we realized the cyclization, uh, again, using a radical reaction. And before doing that, 
uh, this acetyl group was removed and the TBS ox group was eliminated under these uh, basic conditions. So uh, this uh, hydroxy group was converted on xanthate, and under these specific uh, microwave irradiating conditions, the CO bond here uh, is homolytically cleaved to form carbon radical here, and this blue olefin, as from the less hindered phase of this cyclohexane ring, to install this stereocenter and cyclize the seven-membered ring. So the uh, only four steps are necessary to make this fuse ring system from the three component. So this shows the efficiency of the three component coupling reaction for the conversion synthesis of this type of compounds. So uh, up to here, uh, I showed you that the uh, high reactivity of this bridgehead radical and uh, utility of the, this precursor. And this precursor is actually stable because uh, CX heterolysis is inhibited because this reaction gave, uh, would give the antibred oxygen oxocarbonium ion, so it is inhibited. So you, you can do an uh, CX homolysis chemoselectively. But to, when we expand the substrate scope further, we face this problem. From this substrate, CX heterolysis is always faster than the C homolysis. So we need it the more stable radical precursor. So we designed this one. We just inserted CO here, and this is no longer acetal, so this is much more stable. So the plan is c homolysis and acid radical formation, and CO ejection would give us the same alpha alkoxy radical. So this is the idea. And this Seemingly very tricky reaction worked quite well. Uh, this is a radical donor, and uh, under these uh, conditions, uh, at room temperature, the, this C tele bond cleaved, and this acid radical forms. And before addition of this acid radical to an olefin, the CO is ejected to form this radical, and this radical still selectively adds to this blue olefin, and then uh, boron enolate attacks the aldehyde, giving rise to this compound. So here we introduced two, uh, four new stereocenters, one, two, three, four, and this compound have an eight contiguous stereocenters. And five of them are uh, highlighted in gray, directly correspond to and those of these complex terpenoids. So this, again, shows the efficiency of this type of reaction. So uh, I'm showing you the scope of this uh, decarbonylated radical polar crossover reaction. Uh, five and six membered ring was used as a first component, and five and six membered ring used as a second component, and as a third component, we use some benzaldehyde. And every possible combination uh, give us this compound in high yield. So all of these compounds have an eight uh, contiguous stereocenters, and this shows the robustness of this uh, procedure for making the highly oxygenated compounds. So I reached to the uh, summary slide. Uh, we devised uh, in these five years uh, new methods for assembly of highly oxygenated carboskeletons. And these two equations uh, exemplify how we can increase the complexity of the molecule in a single step. 
And because uh, of the mildness and simplicity of the conditions and uh, broad subset scope, this strategy should be very useful for uh, making the highly complex natural products uh, in future. So with uh, this, I will end my talk here. Uh, all the work were, of course, done by an, uh, my senior staff member and uh, array of very talented students. And uh, finally, I thank all of you for your kind attention. Thank you very much.